Well, some troubling hours for Mammoth Unified School District staff, students, as well as law enforcement agencies in Mono County. A Mammoth High School student was apprehended for allegedly making threats against students and staff. Now Mammoth Unified Superintendent Lois Klein emailed parents about the incident. School officials began working closely with Mammoth Lakes Police Department and other local law enforcement in agencies to investigate alleged threats of violence to Mammoth students and staff that were made by a high school student in the district. Now Klein's letter states the student is now being held and questioned by law enforcement. Now Klein wrote that nothing is more important than the safety and well-being of our students and staff and the decision that I made to close schools was guided by this profound obligation. Klein said there are many details she could not discuss so as not to compromise the investigation. Klein did say the student was overheard on several occasions to make threats of violence to students and staff at school while the district engaged law enforcement to investigate. Klein said she was informed that law enforcement intended to apprehend the student before school began and she made the decision to close school and call a red day. Now Mammoth Lakes Police Chief Al Davis said he suggested that there was a power outage and that way they could keep the students well in the dark. Klein said law enforcement felt they needed the element of surprise in order to be certain they could secure the student and evidence that will help in their continued investigation. Now, Chief Al Davis in that email said working closely with the Mono County District Attorney's Office, Mammoth Lakes Police Department obtained proper search and arrest warrants. Now, with those in place, a plan was developed to ensure first the safety of the students, next the officers, and finally the suspect. Chief Davis said that while to many there may have been an inconvenience, he said we feel the safety of our students far exceeds any inconvenience. Now the full text from Superintendent Klein and Chief Davis have been posted on our website, sierrawave.net. Well, Deb Murphy filed a story saying that with a series of March storms that continued to dribble through early April, the most probable runoff forecast for the Owens River Basin sits at 73% of average, 82% for Mono Basin. This according to Los Angeles Department of Water and Power's draft annual operations plan. Now those percentages translate to 219,000 acre feet of runoff through the April September irrigation season for the Owens Basin, 80 82,700 acre feet for Mono. Now, the numbers of interest at the Inyo County Board of Supervisors meeting that happened on Tuesday will be how much LADWP plans on pumping. The range proposed by the department starts at 77,990 and goes to 96,230 acre feet. Now, the report states the range represents 43 to 53 percent of the amount allowed under the terms of the long-term water agreement. Now the high end is roughly twice what LADWP has pulled out of the aquifer during the four-year drought. Now the report includes figures on the change in depth to water at wells up and down the Owens Valley. The impact of the massive spreading last spring ranges from inches to 11 and a half feet. Only six of the 47 well sites showed a decrease from last April, but 17 are still below baseline. Now, Inyo County's Water Department is still reviewing the, port, the report, but Director Bob Harrington stated in an email to Deb Murphy, the low end of the proposed pumping plan is reasonable, but the department will have problems at the high end. Deb Murphy also filed this story. Mono County Board of Supervisors took its first step to protect area grazing cattlemen and 6,000 acres of grazing leases. Now, during a special session last Thursday, Mono County Board signed off on a letter to Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti outlining the impact of Los Angeles Department of Water and Power's intent to pull water from grazing leases. Now, the meeting started with a closed session initiation of litigation 
KSRW's Deb Murphy confirmed both agenda items were related. Now, previously, LADWP's Public Information Office stated in an email the department would perform an environmental evaluation of the proposed ranch leases, holding over the current ranch leases until that evaluation was completed. Now, that may take some of the pressure off the six ranching operations this year, but provides no assurance for the future. Now, one glaring question after last week's discussion, what about the California Environmental Quality Act, CEQA, the review of potential damage to lands irrigated for the last 100 to 150 years? A layman's review of CEQA regulations didn't answer the question definitively. Now, the Mono Board's six-page letter acknowledges LADWP's intent to provide water until an assessment is completed, but states the ranchers need more certainty regarding what to expect on May 1st, the start of Mono's irrigation season. Other issues raised in the letter include profound and irreversible impacts on the economy, environment, and cultural heritage of Mono and Inyo counties. Now, referring to the history of LADWP and the Eastern Sierra, the letter states it simply shocks the conscience for LADWP to propose dewatering the last historic ranch properties and their associated wetland and habitat in Mono County, said Mono County Supervisor John Peters. It's critical how we follow through. We have to go toe to toe with the department. Deb Murphy's full report posted on our website, sierrawave.net. Well, Chris Costello is the new member of the Bishop City Council. Five Bishop residents expressed an interest in the city council seat vacated by the death of Patricia Gardner. Four spoke at Monday's council meeting. The fifth, Stephen Mushoff, was out of town for job training, but is well known to the Bishop City Council. Robert Sharp, a native bishop who recently returned to the Eastern Sierra, offered his experience working with small businesses Deputy Correctional Officer Heather Lind has a long history of community involvement, and Howard Wu has run for a council seat in the past. However, Chris Costello, pastor of the Four Square Church and 30-year resident, as well as Mucha, formerly with the Owens Valley Radio Observatory and Caltech Karma Project, were both supported by members of the audience. Now, Mayor Karen Schwartz made the motion to appoint Mucha, but the motion wasn't seconded. Councilmember Joe Pexi moved to appoint Costello. Jim Ellis seconded the motion, and the vote was unanimous. Costello was sworn in following the meeting. Well, Deb Murphy also filed this report noting Southern Inyo Healthcare District's Board of Directors held one of what will be a long series of meetings to begin dealing with the failure of Measure J, the parcel tax designed to pay off bankruptcy claims. Now, the measure fell short of the required 66% plus one requirement at the April 10th special election. Now, with a court hearing on the district's bankruptcy plan based on voter approval of the measure at the end of May, Board member Dick Fachanko told those in attendance, we can't save the hospital as we know it. Our task now is to figure out how to handle the settlement. Board members Fachanko and Jackie Hickman have met with Ridgecrest Regional Hospital officials. Ridgecrest and Northern Inyo Hospital have expressed an interest, but they can't make us whole, Hickman said. The board's and community's frustration was evident. What's plan B, asked board member Karma Roper. We don't know. Hickman was more direct, saying people spent more money driving to workshops and campaigning against Measure J than they would have paid if J had passed, she said, of the $215 per parcel measure. And again, Deb's full story on SierraWave.net. We'll be back with more news.